So welcome, we're here at the Tech Classic 24 and you see my friend Richard Michael Owen is with me and we're checking out the E-types. Follow me. Seeing stand is I think that is about doing investments and no surprise they have the e-talk as an investment. Looks like they have a presentation on the car which is nice. And that is oh that's a book. Oh look the at that. There what is oh, a book originally. Okay, so this is a fully restored car and it's offered for 249000 Do we have a closer look? It's a right hand drive car and they have nice suitcases. cases. And that looks like a car from Rita. Because they make these suitcases. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. That you showcased that in your last video. Yeah, they're really lightweight. You see the gear stick there? That's a late 4 2. Yeah, yeah, I like the blue pump. Stereo in there, kind it of has, original look. It has your original horn push. But it, the sticker, you see the sticker steering wheel? That makes it more rigid. Yeah, you can climb in and out and kind of lean on it more. Yeah, you can even push the car with that. And that is in line what I mentioned in my other video when I said a fully restored car is 250,000. Number plate isn't the original one, it's a left hand drive. It's a right hand drive, so it starts with a two. Really high nice. cadmium plated, a lot of these bolts and some of the original hardware, that's nice to see. It don't have some crystal clear lines, the reflections, and that is due to the 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 the, the, the clear coat is falling in. It's too thick. We call that orange peel. Orange, orange peel. peel. Yeah, yeah, I call that the... Monet painting. Which is Monet, Monet painting. Monet painting. <laughs> but that is something you can you can you know what Riga is doing. What you can hear. Let's typical things here. That is, that is fit. That is cool also, feature. you'll look at the, the scoops and see how they fit into the bonnet. This one's sticking up and proud, so it wasn't spaced out correctly on the back side of the bonnet. It's not a huge demerit against the car because these things can be adjusted. Chrome, chrome is sticking out a bit here, see? That's pretty typical. Sometimes. Okay, this sounds like a bank. Yeah. The cars are classic in Okay, yeah. So this is fully restored and, and that is your workshop in UK or in Germany? Yes, the workshop was in, in Latvia. In Lat okay, that's three cases there. Yeah. Was Mark here already? No. Okay. <laughs> So is that the uh, price is that including VAT or yeah. what color combination is that? The same. The same. Exactly the same on the steering wheel. Ah, okay, okay. It's 108,000 miles. You see, you see what cars were able to do? 108,000, that's 160,000, 170,000 kilometers. Yeah, yeah, just keep on going and going. This one's for... So, so that tells us the E-Type is a reliable car. Right, yeah, great daily for and sure. It's a car to be used and not just to store okay. away. So it says it retains its original engine, excellent oil pressure, it shows its age, and we're looking at they're looking for 85.5 here at Noble House Classics Heritage. I would buy that because it looks original. It has 180. I like the vintage wall press mirrors, those are quite nice. That's a car you can just drive. Oh, yeah. Do maybe some technical things. Yeah. 85,000. That's reasonable. I mean, you do the engine, and you, isn't, of course, it's not perfect, but. Look at the interior. The original steering wheel. Can we do two open? Or any older? Yeah, I just can check. Yeah? So, yeah. Never been restored? Uh, no. Oh, that's all I love. It's, uh, I would say one of the last owner had a car for 43 years. 40 in Canada, yeah, 43 years. In Canada? 43 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm on the West Coast. <laughs> no, so it's a bit consumer, that, that is how they are after 60 years. Oh, oh, can we have a look under the bonnet? Yeah, I can. I can. That's possible. Yeah. They have to open it from two sides. Yeah. So that's a 63, I assume. It's a 2.8. It's, yeah, it's, it's hard to believe it looks that good after that much, that long of miles. Like that leather's held up pretty good. How about this pin? Is that one stuck? There you go. Good honest car. 
is missing the golden pain, but that's it. Well, that looks original. So immediately when I open up on it and I'm assessing your car, I look right down in the nose and I look for accident damage. And this one actually looks pretty good. See right down in there? It's all clear, no damage. This is neat. See this, this, in, this, uh... Well, that is new here. Yeah, so later on Series 2 cars, they actually put foam around here to stop the air from going... Uh, from. Yeah, to stop the oh. air from going around the radiator. They want the air to go through it. So that is an interesting car. I love to see. Oh, it's the header tank's been removed. Ah, yes. It has so something the going on. Tank. They might, they must have, yeah. So the stories these cars tell, right? So at one point, the header tank leaked like they all do. They all rust out and they replaced it with a bottle. <laughs> that bottle, Canadian ingenuity right there. That's the way we do it in Canada. <laughs> no, I love it. It's not it's running and driving condition. Is it? It's yeah, not ruined. Really. It's, it's just maintained. Yeah, it's maintained. So that's actually, good. Uh, what we would advise is a mild restoration. Yes, just some, yes. Just some bodywork. Yeah. And engine. Yeah. Uh, but we would leave the interior as much yeah, as possible. Definitely, that definitely. would be our choice. So it's a matching on this car, it's missing the head up tag and it needs some attention to details to make it more reliable. Yeah. Well that is a car uh, you hard, it's hard to find. Good looking nose too, yeah. I'd probably put it in like 10,000, make sure that all the mechanicals are up to, right up to stuff and drive it. It's great. Anyway, I think overall if you, if you invest 50 to 75,000, yeah. you've come a long way. Sold you the yeah, we hope. Definitely. Yeah, this, this is the origin, the early style. Oh, it goes of long like that. Oh, it goes down to the bottom. I didn't know that. Wow. The first Have a look in there. It seems all the original paint still. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a white car, wasn't it? Let's, let's, let's clean in there. Wow. Look Normally, that's only for buyers, eh? you know, right? I'm saying <laughs> Floor here. Yeah, especially the uh, the front floors need to be removed. Okay, so there is some work to be done. Just, yeah, some work to be so, done. So the floor. on the floors only. Yeah. So that, that is instead of the fuel pump in the tank, they already put one here. Okay. It's easier to maintain. Yeah. So that is to keep it right. This is an original tool container. 85,000 running driving car. Can't go wrong, I would say. For oh yeah, so they say that this chassis number started as a one and a half yeah so this is a custom color they restored it themselves it's called Verde Nassoni it's a kind of a greeny gunmetal and it looks fabulous here in the lights at Essen doesn't it look at the reflections on that I love it. yeah it's a definitely a series one and a half it has the ashtray in there and the toggle switches yeah, yeah. So it'll have up to the hood. It might have the up, the, up, the, the updated cooling system, the duplex fan cooling system. Two or Well, looking at the, I'm gonna guess it's three carbs. Just judging by the level of presentation here, you wouldn't do a two carb car up to this level, would you? Well, you might if you like these standards. <laughs> So the wheel and tire combo is pretty amazing. Yeah, that fits pretty good. We have, um, okay, have a look there. Yeah, so that wasn't fitted before paint. There isn't, there isn't any, any rubber seat. Yeah, so, so de detailed differences that need to be finished and done correctly. Well, that's easy fitting. I know how much you struggle to get that right. Yeah. This one is how much? 185,000 euros. So it's a series one and a half converted. Let me start over. So I'm really liking this wheel and tire combination. It looks like it's a six inch offset out. Tubeless, you can see the stand here, it's a tubeless wheel and a tubeless tire, I hope, when I see that. I don't see if it's that tubeless on here, but some things have to tell you, yeah, it is tubeless, I see tubeless it right here. Font, yeah, tubeless, tubeless. Yeah. This is the good combo, yeah, it's the yeah. tubeless stand, tubeless tire. Sure there has been rubber around the bumpers in the rear, so same that it's just a small detail item. It doesn't detract from the overall sale of the car. Series 3 are very rare. 
I think you said the North American bumpers, because you see the way that this um, oh, support is sticking that. out, so it would have had this yeah. big rubber piece Isn't right that there. from James Bond? With the, with the machine gun. <laughs> I like these uh, wipers. I've seen them on the saloons. They have these, these extra, extra springs to hold them at high speed to the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> That's an unusual exhaust. Like, normally it's a should four. four. Yeah, yeah, should have four. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Somebody's just making it up, aren't they? Okay, hall number four. Let's see if we can find some E-types. If, if there are any. We found three so far. Well, five people for sale. E-types. <laughs> oh, we found an E-type. Look at that. How long did that take? 45 seconds? What do we have here? Ooh, I like the wheel and tire package on this and the color. Wow, impressive. Loud pipes save lives. <laughs> wow. Look at the color. I would call this like a sage, like a Aston Martin sage green maybe? What do you say? So it's a 1966 series, and it still has the original manufacturer's warranty card. Isn't that nice? This is chassis 1E33397, delivered new to Stanford, Florida, USA. How about that? How did so many American and Canadian cars end up here in Germany? <laughs> It has motif bar delete. I think this is the one I would take so far of all the ones we've seen. It has these LED headlights going on. That's pretty wild. This is the first version of the LED classic headlight we got with the ring. I'm going to guess China made. It uh, really doesn't fit the lines in the style of the E-Type in my opinion. Okay, we found another E-Type. I believe we're in hall number five. Bellrose Classic. Bellrose. So that's a customize what I, what I used to see at Gibson Classic in the UK. I, I, I describe this as E-Type Hot Rod. Hot Rod, yeah. Look at, the, look at the offset on that wire wheel. Wow. The half gen lines, the width in the rear. So we're looking at a 2 plus 2 to give away, of course, the long yeah, strike on the Yeah, it's a 2 plus 2. It's a small touch. What have we got? A 67, 2 plus 2, left and drive, for 179 foot. Oh, look at the wings. Look at the Yeah, wings. highly modified, 5 speed. I doubt you will get that registered as a classic car in Germany. Because it's too modified, isn't it's, that interesting? It has nothing to do with a classic car. It's all customized. Is 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 a hot rod? Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what Isn't that unfortunate that the German government doesn't allow you to yeah, insure these as classics? Yeah, it really bulges out at the back too. Yeah, that looks like a coat. It's got highly, 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 highly modified. Uh, I'm pretty sure you would never get that registered as a classic car in Germany. I don't know about UK. Or Netherlands. I'm not a fan of this de-seaming. So they've taken the flange here, yep, thing that where the back bumper would be, and filled it over. Um, I'm not sure this is such a successful look. I'm, I'm not, I don't know if this is such it a successful look. It looks more like look. a muscle car. It's a two plus two, trying to be a sports car. The two plus two is just not the basis, is it? Not the right starting point, but very well done. Don't get me wrong. This is nice paint. The interior looks really nice. Overall fits and finishes, quite wonderful. Side bonnet, latch, I believe sand. Opalescent that sand, is that what that is? Sand. Is that yes. golden sand? For 205,000 euros at Gallery of Alderin. Presenting very nicely, I would say. The shot, shot lines are good, crisp. The chrome, pillar chrome looks right. But this one doesn't. Right, so one small thing. little detail. Each one doesn't have a reset. I wonder what number that is. It says one of the first 500 matching numbers with heritage certificate, nut and bolt restoration. Uh, yeah. 
so that's a tan interior, right? So real successful, I think, with the color combination here. Super sophisticated, great wheels and tires. It's all, it looks all brand new, really. It's uh, for the price, it's seemingly the best buy so far. So far, yeah, 200, 205,000. That's a starting point, right, for a restored OBL. For restored OBL. You see, it's not, it's not very original, but we haven't seen a lot. It but will cost you 205,000 to get to this level from what I'm seeing. No, you spent more. We more, right. This right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, you're right. More than yeah. 200,000 right. to get yeah. it all done. Right, yeah, that's a good so, point. So, you always say the project car to pass. And you have it straight away. Yeah, right, you're not waiting. So, we have seen cars on the trailer which are sold for 150,000. Mm -hmm. And that is not, not restored. Right. So, if you consider buying a car for 150,000 uh, on VAT yeah. to get it to this yeah. shiny condition, yeah. how much would you spend? 250,000. You have to 250,000 at least, right? On That's top, unlikely. On top. That's Canadian for me. That's Canadian, US. Yes. So that's about 160,000 euro, 180,000 euro. A little euro. less, actually. So, so you buy the car, the OBL, you don't know what you buy, it's a project car, and then you have to get it painted, welded, re new new wheels on it, everything. You spend 150,000 at least. Yeah, and that it's is, a lot. And that is not sourcing missing parts. Yeah. With, these, with these things, you can buy these, well, I, I, I'm guessing that, is a pair of these is maybe 60 pounds, mm -hmm. but to get the original ones, whereas this one is missing, you're spending 600. Wow. If you find them, there must be someone who's making them. So you spend 10 times more on these. These ones just have the recess in here. Those you can't find, you get them made. These are, that is what makes the car an extra 100,000 more expensive. Adds value. And because you're spending the time, but you can always drive the car as it is. And I think an OBL for 205,000 ready to drive. The one we have seen in Paris, the CMC is about maybe the same standard. Yeah. That one sold for 184, we know we auctioned again. So that I think is the the normal price for a restored or the other car, which isn't perfect. It's good, it's still good. You know more than me, I'm I'm just a guy that works on these cars. <laughs> It doesn't say, it doesn't say, how can we find and, out? You know, it's... It's not, but you see here all these things, the rub is missing here. So I don't know, you know, the last 20% costs you 80% of the whole thing. Okay. That's the rule, 80-20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a lot of things done for little effort. But to make it perfect, that is... Yeah, so... It's hard to judge these cars just looking at the outer paint and the outer chrome fitment. That is a major part of the restoration, but then we have the whole mechanical restoration as well. And maybe that has or hasn't been done to a level, and so it's hard to really yeah, judge the value. We don't know about the engine, so, we don't know about the gearbox, we don't know about the IRS. So when buying a car like this, it has to get checked out, right? You, 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 you have to just yeah. You have to test drive it, you have to take it and get an inspection, you want a leak down test, you want to know the condition of the running components as much as possible before making an offer on something. But however, it's an interesting starting point, even when you buy an entire OBL, this is someone you need to investigate more, yeah. ask about the engine, ask yeah. about the engine, go for a test drive, and if that is all good, you will have a good car for that price. Yeah. And I've seen another interview there. Oh, there's another one right there. There's another one. In OBL. Let's go over A there. second. <laughs> oh, I like this color. Oh, what is that? Is that not cool? Are we recording yet? Are we recording? Yeah. Okay. This one, this is, this is the original. How can you it's tell? What are we patina. looking at? Look at the patina here. Yeah, yeah. That you can't get done. That looks, looks like old. That it looks, looks old. It has the original numbers in here. And what does it say? Registered October 7th, 1961. So it's not almost September. September. So one of the last, the 262nd, 262. So this is 
Sapin Classic, based out of France, have this for sale. Maybe I can go, maybe I can go ask for a price. Price on the e-type? Uh, it's not our stand. So. Oh, oh, okay. This one has all the features. You got that chrome finisher? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. The steering wheel is the original one. Even the, the alloy dash. The alloy dash in here is the original one. How rare is that? That's nice to see. It is. And it has some scratches. Yeah. But it is all the original alloy. It has the original radio. Yeah. Wow. It has the original legend here even. Oh, isn't that nice? With a small W in here. They're a very exciting car. Further investigation needed. Pretty, uh, a lot of original features. And I think, let me see. They are ripples, probably have been corroded or broken off, rattled off probably. That's a painted original wire wheel, you can tell the deep recess are really an off piece. The skinny hinges, so they were moving. Oh, okay. That's why you see how soft this interesting. This narrow, so the, that one is actually moving. When you talk. Yeah, nice car. Wow. Nice car. We'd love to see more used steering wheel. That won't match the interior because. That is a bad use, but how often do you see the original dotted alloy dash? It's definitely careful. It's really still yeah, hopefully we can get a look under the hood there later today. Where is he? They're not here, it looks like they're maybe still loading in a car. Oh, they might make some other cars. Is there a sign? Yeah, yeah, oh, look at that. that. That looks like you're fully restored. Yeah, one 64. of the last 38s from 1964. The second E-Type from Gallery Aldering from the Netherlands. An opalescent maroon. They see it's a top restoration, very high quality. This paint is popping out. Look how vibrant it is. This one has been used after the restoration. This doesn't look like mar maroon anymore. It looks like candy apple red. <laughs> Okay, so this is an interesting thing. This is a Pirelli P4000. They haven't made Pirelli P4000s in an awful long time, and they actually released a statement saying that all these have timed out. So these tires need imminent replacement. I can see they were built on the 39th week of 2000. These are 24-year-old tires. Wow! So Pirelli P4000s, you can see these big P4000 script here. Yep. Out. Out in F. That is a date So that car has been restored maybe many many years ago. I don't got it, new it, tires. It looks yeah, you're right, yes. Um, but you see it has been used, you can tell from the seats and leather. How about 24 years ago based just on the tires? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This paint is wonderful though, it's not the right hue, but it is really nice. Yeah. Good fitting of the rear, I like these. Yeah, that's nice. That's yeah. Really neat. Wow. The price was 
It's a 1963 OTS here at Old Timer Farm, 115,000 euros. It's 150,000, is that common rate? 15, I think that 115. is. 115? That's a bargain. Buy it and drive it to Monaco. Yeah. Well, that, that looks very much original. It's a patina, that's not restored really. That is all, all still the good original stuff in here. Yeah. There was a similar one for the same for the same price, and that was privately owned. Yeah, that's the driver. That's a, that's a late. So they already used the battle box. So that's the that's the early one. With the with the with the with the battle. This is a uh, they just cut uh, as as a late three eight. Oh no, it's a late because it still doesn't have the, the coming box this in the middle. A, so it's a, a 63, I think. Yeah. Well, you can. Yeah. 63. Yeah. So back to the 63 here, having a look under the engine bay, as Michael said, definitely looking like a driver conditioned car. Um, looks like possibly the original cylinder head. I see RA1005. So that's pretty early original, car. That's original, yeah. yeah. Felt material in there, right? Is it too I don't think any of them were all the same, that's why I put that felt in there. What was that? What was that? Reflection. I don't think you'll find I don't think you'll find any two are gonna be the same. That's why they put that one half inch felt in there. So that could be Let's have a look at the chassis tag over here. Oh look at this chassis tag, it's really wiped away to oblivion, but it still is the original sitting there, that's nice to see. Oh yeah, that's classic. Someone, <laughs> all the fuel probably wiped that color away. Oh right, that's a good point. <laughs> Over yeah. the years. Sometimes I find on a car, actually this is one of the rustiest spots, because water can hold in this. Yeah, and, it yes. and then the issue is it goes all the way into the sill. Yeah. So water stays in here, it goes down the sill, and then you know, it goes right. down. I s no, now what you would never find or see in pictures, I smell old fuel in here. It smells kind of like varnish. <laughs> so I definitely go through the fueling system and make sure it's all okay. When I smell old fuel like that. So interesting car. I think that's an honest and fair price. For I'd say it sounds good, but it's you want it on the mechanical condition. I smell yes, old fuel. Definitely. Get them checked out, everybody. Don't just buy them sight unseen. And you need to check the bodywork and if you have some corrosion at all. Yeah, I, I, the other one, the white one we've seen over there. Always they, get, yeah. They ahead. said they said they needed new floors and new trunk floor. Yeah. The one for 85000 And that's what I said in my other video. So you buy a car for 85000 or getting new floors in, new trunk boot floor. How that's much most, is that? That's the most expensive part of a restoration is the bodywork and the paint. So you're going back down to square one. It's much better by a car where it's solid or the work's been done correctly. And documented like these guys. Have. They have the restoration pictures oh, here. Oh right, okay. So, but eighty-five thousand for an e -top, the white one, sounds a bargain because you also see other cars for two hundred fifty thousand. It's and the car on the market better than me. I'm from Canada. <laughs> I, I, what I'm saying is, we have seen cars for 250,000. The gum at the yeah. home is a rare, right. with, with his cases. Sure. That was brand new, fully restored, out of out of factory, really. The other one was 85,000. So there's a gap of 170,000. That's a lot. And everyone would think 170,000, I can get fixed everything, and I have something left. Mm -hmm. But maybe that is not true. So maybe the better option is to buy the restored one for 184,000 from CMC, the OBL car. But be prepared. Getting new floors in, new new boot floor, you have to spend body work and paint work is at least just to get the job done. Without assembling and disassembling, plus the other things you discover. Yeah, my body and paint starts at 80,000 Canadian. Canadian, that's about yeah. 60,000. And that's where it starts. That's where it starts. And then you, have, then you have to do the metal replacement, it adds on to that. And while you're on the job, you do all the other things. 
and then and then you can think it's another 170,000 to spend to get everything nice while you're on the job. You don't want to start and stop every day, every day again. We've known this car for a while and we have the complete history. It was actually delivered new in Belgium. So it's a European spec and it's it new in Belgium. So it was delivered new in Belgium that to a Belgian guy. That means it has a long differential yeah. ratio, yeah. The, three yeah. or yeah. the desired yeah. three or seven differential ratio. Yeah. That's what everybody wants. So you don't need the five speed gearbox, you can drive it as is. You can drive it as is, but uh, you can also buy it as is because it's bloody cheap. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving it away. We've tried to sell it at uh, 185. And, uh, 185? Yeah, because and? at the time there were 200 to 24 really well restored ones. Yeah. And now my uh, customer who owns it for the last 15 years, he's uh, tired of it. Yeah. He, he moved out of the cars and he said like, whatever. Yeah. He bought it 20 years ago, so he, I don't think he even paid 100 for it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, now we're selling it 150. There's nothing wrong with it. It's an older restoration. Yeah. Um, which is, I would leave it like that. Yeah, definitely. Drive and, uh, it. And, and enjoy it like that. And in 10 years, when it's really tired, you can restore it. But yeah, it's, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. it's the right car. And it's really, really an opportunity. And I see a lot of original stuff still on it. So just drive yeah, it, enjoy it. it. Everything is original. Yeah? It's really good. And I like the color. That's a common red. Oh, yeah. That is the authentic well, about the inter color. Well, it's not the most uh, Desired, commercial maybe. color. Yeah. The, the most expensive color is, is uh, uh, not that gray, but uh, gunmetal. Gunmetal, you think? Gunmetal over yeah. over red. That was um, that gray over black, and I like it that they put the red interior because I like I love it. Um, but um, yeah, this is. The standard of obviously yeah. for E-Type, the red E-Type is, is really good. And if you ask a lady, they always want it. It goes with the lipstick and I think the it, shoes. Oh, it looks like a Ferrari. People drive it on the highway and the kids are like, Ferrari! Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Ferrari said about the E-Type? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, really so it goes back to, to, to 95, 97 you said? Yes, 97. And the, the, the newest one is from... 11. 11. 11. It says Reg heritage. Uh, heritage, yep, certificate. So only the interior was changed. Yep. Because uh, I'm looking at the nose down in there, that's the first thing I look at. Yeah. Looks nice and clean down there. I see original chassis tag. If you come over here, you'll see that. Ooh, this is really cool. Is the French delivery tag it's a over French here? So it's a European spec, crash last when the US comes. So, a lot more silent. So early 4.2 brake box there you're pointing out, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the early, that's the intermediate. Yep. The locking system. And the original, the original in plate. And all the French cars here were required to have a different tag here that listed the type. Kind of a neat touch. Proves that it's originally a French car. It's a French delivery, really. Yeah. yeah. And that tells us it has already the long Diff ratio is real seven. That's what you said earlier. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really interesting. So 140,000 euros, 1965 fixed head coupe, early series 4.2. Red car. Yeah. Oh, we have a 500 car, so we have to have some okay. systems. To, but you will get the dossier from both of them. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, if you need more information or after the show, you can send me a mail. And that looks like a European version because this one does not has the right. guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the second V12 receiver. That's a province I live in, in Canada. So it's a Canadian spec. Oh, right, look at that. Yeah, it came right out of our... Uh, it was in 1997, it was in British Columbia. Yeah, yeah so... I yeah. don't know how rare the, the car trips are. I think Yeah, 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 they were all black. This one's been painted metallic yeah, black. That, kind of a nice touch. Is that the original, really? That's manual, that's good. Manual. 
Fatima Jaguar. Uh, is that the number here? So this is a federalization tank for U.S. delivery, I believe. But you can see the date of manufacture there. Bon, bon, eh. 71, late 70, 71, 72. No, that's series two. 69, we put those on. 69. 69. Yeah. Texas 87. Oh yeah, that's a good sign. So, so just well, judging I'm by the getting, decals. I'm getting, getting confused now with, no. the, with the bump of overriders. So what's that first in American spec? Only the last ones had those big, the big, big ones. So this bumpers. one is in 72. So it would be earlier than the other one we saw. Yeah, it says right there, this, the date is uh, 72, yeah. Eighth month of 72. Yeah, so when they start, it was, it was 20, it was 20,000, so that might be car number 589. S20, yeah. 589. So that must be very early in the series. Uh, there's a Texas sticker in the window plate. That's a really good sign. And here's this chrome that always goes missing. Yeah, it's just flying off. This chrome is very expensive to I wonder buy if new. This is still on. It says 36,000 miles. That could be original. Yeah, so when you're wondering about things like that, there's other things you can check. You can look at the pedal rubber. Yeah. You look at where of the pedal rubber. You grab the door, you pick it up, and you see how worn the hinge is. And I have a tight door. Pedal rubber looks good. Those are strong indications that this could be a very original car. That's a good sign, so it's not consumed. And the wonderful camera operator here, you can see there's a Texas tag from 1987. That's one of the best climates on the planet for a car, so that's a really good sign. So if you come forward here, when we have a look at the chrome here in what they call the eyebrow, I believe this is the original eyebrow. And the fit, oh, it's fallen out here, so it's always tough to fit these. It's never, it's never a simple pleasure. I like the Lucas seal beams. That's like an original seal beam style headlight. It's this chrome that goes all around the opening of the bonnet. Oh, that would be it's hard. It's so to fit. it's so elegant. I've seen these on the on the Ferraris, and that's very hard to fit. Yeah, chrome that goes directly on paint always is troublesome. This one is sticking proud, but they probably weren't that great from the factory, anyways. Something you've never seen before. Michael, is it spotted in E type. Looks like gunmetal. It's like a magnet. Look it's at just, that. It's just I don't see much yet. Gunmetal over red. It's a 4.2. It's just an exotic car. 4.2, yep. Red interior. Ooh, look at those tires and wheel combo. That's nice. It has the cross plies on there. Yeah, so uneven metallic. That's a rolling gear stick. That's a good jump. You're, you're worried about your gear stick moving around when you're the driving? Gear stick, well, I had that topic where someone was, was telling me there were two different lengths. This definitely is a long gear stick. <laughs> it's when you run a long throw. So it's 1965, 10,000 kilometers, 190,000 euros. Let me see. Yeah, fully restored, a lot of great parts. I have the reclinable seat, the backrest. See this? So this is a hard thing to get right. See, this, this, this chrome finisher is put in with a rivet. It should be a tiny number four countersunk screw. It should be screw, yeah. But it's something that has to get right in the paint. And so see that quite often. But they have the adjustable So it's series seat. two seats in there. That's kind of uh, desirable, I would say. 
You know what I will see very often? Hmm? And you might have seen that. That the softer here, this one, is really touching the seed here. And very often you see they have a hole in here. Yeah. You see this? When you when you sit in here, this one is pointing into the backrest. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, it's kind of like a design flaw. Yeah, something like that. And uh, I've seen cars, especially 4.2 has that, because the bucket seats in three, they don't have that. Yeah, and this, that's, a, that's not, if you were to take the seat and recline it back further, it would collide with the top. Exactly, and then you get the hole punch. Yeah. It has a canvas top and burgundy. That must look really nice when it's, when when it's, it's close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. From the color combination, is lovely. It really looks good. Yeah, this is trimmed in leather. I think it would have been a different material, right? Texture, usually, yeah. This is a vintage Bentley cut. Is it? I've myself. Ah, okay, looks good. Looks well done, good. well done. I went to Bentley in Mayfair. Yeah. And I spent four hours in Bentley with swatches of leather and swatches of paint. They were okay with that? I know. <laughs> I, I don't want to be arrogant, but I know. So uh, we spent literally hours doing it. Can we see the engine? Absolutely. Wonderful. Do you want to grab the other side? Yeah. One of these. It's very clean. I tell you what, it's absolutely unmolested from the point of view of upgrades <laughs> and it drives absolutely superb. Good to hear. It really does. It drives beautifully. Enzo Ferrari was correct. So We're now in trouble yeah. when this was produced. <laughs> so this is a 67 car? 65. 65? 65 Series 1, 4.2. Where was the restoration done? Yeah. I've been restoring cars in Poland for about 35 years. Wow, Poland! So that's mine. This is the one of one. This was hand built in Oxford. Um, basically 10,000 man hours. The guy who owned the garage, it was for him, and he basically restored it over about seven years. Beautiful. Hey, Michael, so this gentleman tells me this was done in Poland. Poland? Oh, where? Anyway, I always say, is there a special factory company doing that? That's a good exotic. I've been restoring cars for about 30 years, uh -huh. all over the world, and then eventually I found the appropriate people, and these are the appropriate people. But you are not Polish. I'm English born of Polish parents. Okay. So I speak Polish fluently. My wife is Polish. Okay. But I'm I'm obsessed about quality. Yeah. I don't care about money. Yeah. I, it's just got to be right. It's be right. Okay. And, and did just, you only Jaguar or any any car? Uh, Mercedes Jaguar. The answer is, there's no point in restoring a, a Triumph Spitfire. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm always saying. There doing. is, because yeah. that's what my wife wants. Uh, no, that's what my daughter wants. Okay. Um, but the costs, you have to have a high value, high value vehicle, because to restore a 190, to restore a TR6, it's the same price. Yeah, exactly. Not, not exactly, but virtually. Has it always been like that? The work is the work. The work is the work. It's two, it's probably you're looking at three, three and a half thousand man hours. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's that, going on? That is nine thousand man hours. And um, so you, you think the TR6 there is appearing? No. It's. You have to ask yourself the question, what are you doing it for? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're doing it for you. Yes. You're doing it to make money. Yes. You're doing it to keep. Yeah. You have to then decide what you're doing. Yeah. 
you know, if you're doing it because this was my father's car, I'm restoring it, I'm going to keep it, it's part of my family and life. Who gives a shit about money? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So you get the money, but proportionally... I would but if you go to New Forest Jaguar in England, you ask them to bare metal respray and retrain an E-Type, they'll charge you £400,000. Wow, that's a huge amount. New Forest Jaguar. So, so rest how, how can they restore it for 400000 and you offer you one for the agent? I'm losing money on this. <laughs> no, seriously. What? Yeah. No, no, yeah, seriously. Because we know reforestation costs you about 200,000 euros. The problem was this car came in before Covid. The whole world went to shit. I was meant to get my money out in 17 months. It's now four years later. Wow. But I did not say cheat. I just said I want it as I want it. I'll lose a hundred grand on this. But we discussing that issue always because the cost of restoration has come so far up. That you know what? This gentleman restores my cars. Yeah. Uh, this is Adam. What's his name? Adam. Hi Adam. Hi Adam. It's Pleasure, Michael. The cost of restoration is one thing. There's nothing worse than paying for something which then at the end is not the quality you would like. That's, that's my issue. So I don't go to this guy saying, do me a deal. I go, do that. I go, go and look at a, B a BMW. That's what I want. Literally from the inception of the vehicle to its end. We can all cheat. I can make, yeah. the, I can make this look like this and save half the money. Yeah. But you know what? Lie underneath. Yeah. That's it. Speech over. You know, we want to produce the best and we're very proud of it. But I think that's possible. How much is that? 179? Sorry? 65. 90, 000, 90, 000. That includes a car already. Yeah, I've lost 100 grand. Yeah, of course. When no, I'm serious. When you buy a project car, how much is that? 78,000? And then probably 70. So in England it will cost you project car plus 350, maybe 400,000. Done. Yeah. Big bill. You go to Eagle Leaf Type, a donor car, turn it into an Eagle specification will cost you the car plus 400,000. Why do people think they can find an excellent running Say again. Why do people believe, still believe, they can find an excellent running any type of harness in the When you see the German offers, you know why? You know why? Because if you haven't got the knowledge, you just look at it and go, that's nice. That's what I want to do. That's it. That's what I want to do. That's it. I buy cars, and this guy spends eight hours on the car I want to buy. Not restored. No, no, just inspected. Just inspected. To know what you bought. Yeah. And heritage certificate, providence, yeah. numbers matching. This is all very important. Yeah. It's very important. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for the time. Agree with you. Speech cool. over. Yeah. Totally Speech agree. over. <laughs> that was for free. Thank you. Oh, good. It's yeah. This is the material. Lamborghini is nice. That's what you mean as well. Richard, if you would swap an e type what for? Oh. 275 GTP. Ah, yes, I agree. What the green one we've seen in Paris? Oh, that'd be nice. On the left. On the left. That'd be nice. Nice red OBL. monster. OBL. It's OBL. <laughs> I'm getting all jacked up. It's another OBL. What a pull up. 259,000 completely restored. Nice. Oh, I said, it's a
Dutch faulty fans find it not a Hmm? Must be another five speed conversion, maybe, or something? It's a long piece. Yeah. Well, it has the correct chrome here. Yeah, door chrome's correct. It's an extremely long piece thing. So, either they changed the gearbox or. They had, they really had two different lengths for the casting. Mm. If that is still the most box, that casting is true. Yeah. This is a problem. This one has the Wilmer Breen somewhere. usually don't see in the ripple part. Can you zoom that in? <laughs> yeah. And that's a bit more weak sign. So that is um, from the few old stock. <laughs> and the bullet is, is not but we I also cannot the bullet. So fully restored OBL for 260,000. What do you think? What do you think, Richard? What do I think? Okay, well, I'm your resident OBL expert in Euros in Europe, apparently. <laughs> but uh, I think it's fine. You know, we saw the one in Paris and they wanted about 200,000 for that. Again, further investigation. We have to know more. Sounds pretty good. Worth further investigation. How's that for an answer? What do you think? Yes, yes. It's a good starting point, but how do you like these screws on the steering wheel? Can you see the screws? I've seen that elsewhere before. Yeah, when you have to replace the wheel and you don't yep. have the rivets for the hub, yeah, it's, it's, pretty, pretty, it's pretty common. Because the steering wheel comes with them. Right? Yeah, but the steering wheel, oh, that's uh, that's uh, aftermarket. It's called the motor leader. You see the sharp corners in the rings? The holes in the yeah, steering yeah. wheel and the spokes? That's the sharp corner. Let's go to the positive note. Look at the chrome here. It looks like the original pillar That chrome. is original. Yeah, the original finisher. Look at the wide the wide bottom chrome for the windshield. That's all really nice. And this one? The rubber's up there. And it's That's, early. The this early chrome's cap. in here. Uh, it's stacking up here. It's stacking up to look like a really good chrome. The original door chrome's here? Yeah, yeah, very nice. Yeah, the chrome is looking really good. They have the original door barrels. I think there are original PL lights in there too. They look kind of foggy and old. The tripod? Yeah. I think a PL700 tri bar. Uh, Michelin, very nice package there. X, XVS, V rated tire. So it's a very expensive tire. And it says here tubeless, so there is the potential to run a, a tubeless wheel too. Very nice. A couple things here, you got the, the, uh, the seal sticking out here. See that? That's kind of sloppy, so I, I could never deliver a car like this. It's just not not good enough fitment for delivery. So this is this is a later one. So he has the coach key here. He's unlocking the OBL. Yes. Now you can see why they got rid of that. And you have to get this tool out. It's quite an open. By the way, focus on it. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, that's that's original. original tag, look at the that! Original. Yes, it's a complete point. resort. It's nice. So it's called okay, so 296. Right to my back. You see the pumpkin? Yeah, the pumpkin radio. The original the air balance pipe. Wow. Look at those, the the, the right food reservoir. Yeah, wow. So that is... It's adding up. It's adding up.
has the original hydraulic cylinders here with tags. That's nice. Yeah, the what you see the below the plate of the booster. So yeah. It's a later one. Oh, okay. You see that? It's a Dunlop, the later one. Head number R1421-9. It's one that was matching on this and because that is original tag and you see the bolts. You see the bolts? Black oxide on the bolts. Yeah. How about this uh, how about the generator here? Oh I can't see the stamping on it. Very nice. Yeah. So I, would, I personally would consider that as more original than the one we've seen in Paris. And you see this here? That's interesting. What do you got? The swan neck. The water rail swan neck. Oh, look at the swan neck look there. Look at this here. That is rare. So it's a bonus point there. So this is car number 296. Yeah. With the swan neck. Okay. And we've seen the other cars before without that. Yeah. And we thought that would have been original because we thought that changed early in the process. Let's change the the carbs. Were you looking for the T? T or the uh, or this and the U. T or U. Interesting. That's all U mark. You know, yeah. see that U origin. Yeah, it looks original. There's, there's a U3 or there, maybe there, you can see it there. The float bolt tags are there too, they look pretty good. Yep. So it's, it's all U mark, so they all the early original ones, the, uh, the float bolt tags. The starter is a modern one, high torque starter. You see now this one says R. Which is a rear. And this one says C, C and is that one says F. F that's yeah. a but they're all there. They're all there, but different order. And here, the wiper motor is dated 260. So that's a year before the production date. Yeah, wow. Yeah. What, a, what an amazing car this is. And the wiper motor is hammer on. Interesting. And the linkage in the brake, is that black or is that cat plate? This? No, the linkage in the pedal box, in the cage. The, yes. yeah, look, this has just been painted, painted right now, but it was uh, that would originally be black oxide, I believe. It's black too. Original tags down here too, don't even see that, that's really nice. Very original car. Very nice. What is the history? You don't know? It's not my car. How can you tell? The reverse lights early? Get the camera. Once had the E on it. Oh, okay. So these are the hinges Michael referred to on another car that are really wiggly. They changed to a much stronger one later on. Yeah. Initially they only had one. Oh, okay. Then they had two to oh, make it even yeah. stronger. Yeah. But still it was moving around. Yeah. And then the very later ones they have a massive one, a chunky yeah. one. Pretty sturdy, the four of them. Yeah. Look at this detail here. See the, the, in the gutter rail? Yep. There's a metal, metal flap in there. Take it. it has a butler light. Oh, butlers? Butlers, yes. I can throw some light in there. Wait, 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 wait. wait. This is the butler light. Can you see that? You zoom in. But that is a car with many original features. What do you think, Richard? I think we should make an offer. We should make an offer. 300. 300? Alright, we're headed to Cool Classic Club, which is by Timmy Tex in our first series two of the day. The first S2 FC. Yeah. So far, let's check it out. That has a union flag. It's wild, baby. Never seen one. Ain't it? That is one striking color combo. Wow. P O O. It's called the Shake You Are. Look at that. The 
first S2 we have seen today is a touch registration. Look at the interior, imagine the outer paint. I'm not just a pretty face baby, I've got mojo for days. You see the paint? <laughs> we have that on Jonas. You know, it's cop or something. See the creeps in here? Yeah, yeah, that crazy moisture gets underneath, pushes up. Love that combination. What's going on with the interior? The hat turn. There are price, price of paint test. Oh, that is interesting. It's a Series that, 2 with the toggles. Well, look at the interior. It's matching the outside. Yeah, that's, the, that's way over fancy, the top. Fancy, isn't it? Uh, I think it's the easiest way to get everybody to look at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody will notice you with that one. That's for sure. Wow. I'm flashed. I'm flashed. Have you ever seen it? No, it's wild. Was it Movie Car Series 1 or Series 2? I'm not sure. Good, I mean. So then we go from absolutely classless to classy here with the well, that with is a an fixed awesome, head with the hard top. Awesome looking. This is one and a half. This hard top just sets it off with the chrome. Wow. So this is a 1968 series one and a half. For see, this is 200,000 euros. This is smaller than on the series on the series three. This right. One, yeah, the eyebrow, the eyebrow is, smaller. Is, is thinner. Actually, these are quite hard to seat because it's supposed to seat down on the paint. We only have the tangs to set it down. And if we do it all the way around, that's looking pretty good. That's really good for that chrome right there. It's a thumbs up for me. And for the paint. And for the white walls. I know some people hate me for that, but I love these white walls. This a hard top with white walls? Okay, okay, I'm feeling it. Well, this looks all neat here. It's all equal. And it's done. Better visibility in the rain at night. Sure. So it's not a disadvantage. It's just a, it's, it's a it's a technical advantage when driving. Right. And it does get foggy on or inside when you when you warm you know with the lights. You warm up the damp and then. Was it was it you that told me that this was changed because the light had to move forward so from the side you could see the light? Was it was it you that learned that from? Mm -hmm. That's what they needed for regulations. They needed to move the light forward. And that's why this eyebrow piece was created and the new sugar scoop bucket. I only learned that they removed that yeah. because when there was moisture in there, as often happened, yeah. you turn on the lights and the and the moisture, the water is oh, evaporating, okay. yeah. and that is closing the oh, visibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two different theories there. Yeah. <laughs> so you got the piping on the interior here. Really interesting sand on beige. Color it's combo. Shorter, isn't it? But you notice the glove box flap, the, the, the yeah. opening. Yeah, that's like a two oh, plus two, isn't it? Yes, that's yeah, two plus two. Yeah. But it makes sense because when you leave the car open, yeah. without you know, without the hard top, when you get closer. I often wonder when I see wipers like this if the parking function isn't working correctly because these wipers should be all the way down. Highly polished engine. Wow, so it's a European delivery. Okay, yes. One and so a half a with, with the three carbs. Sadly, the plate is the min plate is missing here, but it has a number there. The number is one six seven eight one six seven six nine. Yes. Up. And the, and the foam here I was talking about earlier, oh, so the so air gets channeled into the radiator. Where did that change? That's a standard fitment for Series 2. Series 2 is 2. But yeah. it has a top of switches. If ever a car's overheating or you really want a quick fix, you glue one of those in. There's, there's a missing tag car. <laughs> so it's a tag delete. It's the tag delete. Yeah. 
So, well, obviously, it's fully rebuilt, all done. Like that's one really professional looking cooling system, isn't it? With the dual duplex fans like that? That is like impressive. It's clean under here. Where the bonnet plug isn't plugged in, so the headlights wouldn't work at all. I just got an empty plug down there. It's hard to see. There it is. See that's not no, no it's not plugged in. Yeah. Oh yeah, they usually fit like that. They usually fit like that. See the bonnet plug's missing. Some original stuff here. Got the original helmets for the yep. battery. How do you get the, the lights on? Was that the plug? You don't. It just fell off. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So it was there. It was there. I love the hard top. The hard top wins, wins us over. Yeah. Despite, the, despite all the issues like a missing tag. Yeah. <laughs> we love that hard top. And uh, it's, it's awesome looking. What was the price for this? $199? Uh, it's about 200000 For a lovely, beautiful looking car. Fully okay. restored. Yeah. So now this hard top would have originally been black. They were never body colored, right? I thought sometimes they had that in the factory life. You could order that. Oh, okay. You could order factory or body color from the factory. Interesting. I didn't know that. Ah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that if you have. I see series one and a half. Again. What say? One and a half. I don't think he's part of this. is from the Django division. And he said for him it doesn't exist series one and a half. So this is oh this is So that is or you see the series two wheels. Yeah. But that number is was in the first half of 67. I don't know what this is for. So that's a probably private owned car, which is here for sale. Again, the gear stick that long. I think that's not. Is that for the green So All about cars. All about cars. Dodge GR. Plus, plus 30, is that grease? Yeah, I think it is. Looking very original. See the plating on the wishbones and the, a lot of original fits and finishes here in the engine bay. We've got headers too, three to one headers. It looks all good. I mean, the, the paddle board, that's original girling. That's original girl. that's original steering wheel. Yeah, the suspension's looking very original. Alternator's looking original. How many times are they going to say original? <laughs> oh, yeah, count that. <laughs> they will complain, I know that already. <laughs> Three to one headers, that's kind of uh, an upgrade, I would say. Yeah, with the Webis as well. But that, that could actually be the original interior. How many miles? Is that 37,000? Look. Shame you can't transmit the smell. Oh, okay. So we, we need smell of it. Yes. Maybe AI will figure that out for us soon. But, yeah. Uh, we need to find but out. But we're smelling that horsehair Judy insulation. Is that, is that original? That's a grainy stuff here, or is it? What do you think, Richard? Is that original? Possibly. Possibly. Or, or it has been redone many, many years ago. This yeah. is original. Now that, is, that's an interesting comment stuff. that you say that because somebody who says that they like a patinaed car and they and they have a restored car and they want a patinaed car, yeah. all they have to do is drive it. Uh, you have to drive, you have to use it. <laughs> Just drive it. You get your own patina. It's your own. You earned it. But this is your original one. You see how grainy that so, is? Yeah, we're looking at this heavy grain here, yeah. Yana, on the door top. Here. 
This one, the structure of the heavy grain here. I think it might be original. That is original because the new ones are, are smoother. The steering wheel definitely is original one. Is original steering wheel. It's original wood, original horn push. Greek. I can translate that if you want. That's Greek. There you go, watch. So we're gonna do some inception here. So I'm gonna take a picture. And then I'm gonna go into my photos. Okay, here we go. Technology people. Ready? We're gonna go lens. Oh. Okay. Translate. Equipment. Exchange car accepted, used antique historic. That's what that says. Okay, so they're willing to trade. The original car. Good bones, really good bones. Yeah. Nice. I'm, really? well, now, what do you think of Weber's? Have you driven a car with Weber's before? No. I'm I not just, a huge fan. I, I love the original ones. They're so smooth. Yeah. yeah. These are a bit noisy. Good for the racetrack, good for full open yeah. throttle driving, but uh, for yeah. everyday use, going from the idle jet to the main jet, it's a little rough on these. I love to look at my strong brakes. Leaper on the hood. See that? Did they have that sticker on the Very, side? That's not the sticker, that's a that's an emblem. That was there originally? Yeah, and then if you come forward here, Yana, you'll see this car actually has a V12 V12 chrome around the hood here, around the opening for the bonnet. That's the very latest six-cylinder cars had that. You have to kind of go above here. It's wow, that the fitment is perfect. Do you yeah. see the if you go above here, Yana, you can see it. There's the chrome yeah. in there. Oh. How, how neat that is on the yeah. bonnet. Okay. I've actually restored one of these and then the very last of the series, the dashboard will have more plastic in it. So this is the very last iteration of the six cylinder dashboard and it has these interesting um these features here that that, that light up from behind ah, it nice. makes this even harder to restart and that's a factory fit phillips radio that's really cool ah, lovely. original gear knob on a shorter gear stick compared to the other one we've yeah, seen that's what we're used to seeing yeah you see the uh, the, the the steering lock oh it's a locking it's column lock. car and probably kilometer speedometer see the speedometers in the Kilometers. Is Those it two always going concert. Ah, okay, so it's European. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. German delivery. I'm, Could be. I'm gonna guess. And what do you think about German. these perforated <laughs> seats? Yeah, those are nice. Got the shrunken head thing going on here. Yeah. Might be original. Yeah. Is that is that um, a series two or three feature? Was the was the feature? And then we got the biggest, fattest ones that don't break. See that? That's a that's a real change from what the first ones uh, looked like, isn't it? Chunky. Yeah. Chunky. But that looks like the original one, the soft top. Hard to say without it without seeing it up. It's fine, so that looks really, it really looks like the original one. Maybe we can ask the gentleman who's uh, this car. You know, is it? Is it? Yeah. Right. We're filming doing an e-tech report for Tech Classica. I'm wondering if we can see the very Is that still the original interior? breather pipe here. This is all the very last of the six cylinder American delivery cars. So this is black. It's it's not a big deal to buy three SUs and a manifold for yeah. them. Right. That's correct. Many people yeah. do that. How much is this car? 
Uh, about 100. 100? Okay. okay. So it's nice road, it's a series 2. Yes. Uh, what was the original color? Because the inside here is black. So this is this is a wild detail you just don't see. So this pipe here, believe it or not, is a pipe that goes all the way from the carbs all the way over here and the, into a flexible line that goes down to a charcoal air canister for to, to manage the fumes coming off of the carburetors and there's a line coming from the fuel tank forward to manage those fumes as well. Making me crazy. How can I follow you? <laughs> you see that here? The, why is that? It says in the in the channel on that side there. Why did they have that? Is it for this big alternator? I'm not sure. Ah, so is that factory line? And you see the, the mesh? It's further in. You yeah, still that, see the holes. Yeah, right, yeah. Further out. Right, yeah. So series two, in the later series two, they pushed that in and made it. A, it's actually a smaller rock guard. And but you see the mesh. The other one has still the holes in it. We figured that out when I was trying to mount one of these smaller ones into the earlier cars. One thing I do love about these Series 2 cars is this, this duplex fan system. It's the original system and it's the best one that was fitted to an E-Type. There's a number here, 2R14379. Well, there you go. Federal delivery, US spec, Back 1972, six-cylinder E-Type, last of the series. I think there's a, I think we got a new technology aluminum over there. Let's go have a look. Aluminum. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look. I think he's coming there. Wait, he's coming oh. there. We see original. Look at that. Okay, so here's what we like to see. We got original oh. stuff, right? Ooh. Come here. It says that it was at some point it was registered in Sweden. Was registered so, originally? So, sorry, all on the islands. That's part of Finland. Kind of part of, but kind of. It's a bit like. Oh, uh, that's interesting to see. I love to see the history here. Well, service vouchers, yeah, that's original stuff. That's rare. Roger Payne would love to see that. US car would find that, but I couldn't find the J JDHD certificate, so they probably don't have it. So old, old receipts going back to 83, A 83. that's nice to see. That's when the car was probably only 11 years old. Let me see when the first service was. There's no stamp on the first page. Very rarely those are. Oh, sadly, there are no stamps on here. But let me see if there are more invoices. Up there, yep, up here. So this is 80. 80, we're going back 80, to 80. going back to so, 80. So then you can start to prove uh, mileage, Mine Mileage right? 55,000. And now it's listed as... Oh. 88,000. 88, so that could be original, really. There's 80, November 80. Some work done, so that's nice to see some history in here. What? Never seen this before. Service. Here we go. That's a. Yeah. Never seen this before. Ah, oh, what's this? That's, that's wow! That's what is Please leave your get here what at all times. What is this? In the US, they used to have those. Really? Oh, they, put, they put them in the credit card machine together with the credit. Really? Card. Oh, wow! How often do you see this? Oh, there it is. There it is. There, the that's what we want to see. San Diego delivery. Wow, that's, San Diego? that's like. That's that's a gold. Where are you guys from? Canada, Germany. Yeah, we do it. We're doing an E-type report. We show all the E-types available for sale. That is that is the very first which came with the car. So that makes it very interesting. Yeah, that would be similar to something that came with a V12. Yeah, really nice to see. So we believe this is the original mileage. Eighty-eight thousand. Eighty-eight. So we call was here fifty-five. Who knows? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, it's nice to see documentation. There. Some the really old stuff, Santa Barbara. Is. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah, that, oh yeah, that, oh yeah. That navigation system. That's like that's, straight. Yeah. That's the, pure gold right there. Insurance? Such Original registration. Ah. See, this is 72. So late 72. See, 12th month of 
December. It was it was Christmas delivery, 1971. Oh, that's nice to see. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. Small Congrats. things, but interesting and important. What I think. I'm asking for them because it's not one of four companies here, and this is not one of the cars I'm selling. So, but we all we need to know more about our, each other's cars. So it's very helpful. Yep. Ask us to bring them out. So here we go, this is the information everybody. 100,000 euros with Triangle Motor Company. There's the contact information right there. It is still registered in the Orland Islands. Uh, well, so that's somewhere near Finland or? It's like a bit like General Island of the UK. They have their own going. Okay, so when you're selling it, you have to pay VAT here or uh, the 7% or is it within the EU already? Be interesting to know, but you can always call these people here yes. and just get more information. Well, actually, I'll give you my friend's card. Yeah, that's it's a movie car. Oh, okay. So, this is for sale here. It's a film car, the movie car, Jerry Cotton. Some of you might know this. Tromsky, there's a famous guy, that's him, that's him. Oi. Oi. So this is an E-Type I've seen two years in a row here and it's for sale. Um, the price is 129000 That. It's a bit too much according to me because I think it is an original car with original patina. You see the chrome here, it has a lot of pitting, which is which is maybe boring, but uh, on the other side you have a perfect fitting here of the chrome rings. You have the original glass in here, you have original glass all over the car. It has some, well, let's say, homemade repairs and the paintwork is not perfect. But I think the interior looks very much original and you can have a look inside it has the original wall push and from what I see here it has the original dash legend it has the original gear stick and you see the satinated steering wheel this is basically for cars 67 and later for the US but it, it appears to have still the original interior because it's a little lot more grainy the modern vinyl is a lot smoother, but you have the, the original triplex marks on all the windows. And you see here the patina, the pitting on the, on the it's not pitting, but it's, well, it's the aging. But you have, of course, some homemade paintwork. That is the thing. And you would need to adjust everything. The doors do not close properly, but it has the original two lock barrels. So that is interesting. And then I had a look underneath the car and I found these rare air channels for the rear brakes and I was thinking that is something really odd and I told that to my friend and that he said that was a racing spec you could order straight from the factory so when someone intended to race with these cars you can get that prepared by the factory so okay. I think that is original. I don't know if we can get a shot here. Yeah, we're going to go down. I'm I'm on the camera right now. Oh, Richard, is, Richard is recording. You see uh, these here? These? And it's dark, but I think oh, I got wait, it. I, I got here. it. Yeah, the light. Oh, look at that. You we got these? it. Yeah. And I was wondering why normal cars should have these. But then someone told me that is that you could order for racing cars from the factory. Wow, what a feature. Michael, well, you good spot on that. So I think that's wow. what it is, and that's what someone told me because I was surprised and I saw someone messed the car up. So, and I think this, the locks, these are the original ones. They, they have the original wheels. The, the knockoffs, so you can see the deep depth to the curl in the wire wheel. 
and they are in really good condition you know the chrome on the wheels you have some you know some repairs here but these are the original center nuts yeah you can tell because of the fine stamping here in and the... that arrow is fine and long I'm a little concerned with this many weights that might mean the wheels pretty far out of balance could be the tire as well yeah sometimes it's a, it's a shop who is balancing the wheels sometimes they're not aware of it and you see here this one this is flat i don't know if you can record that but no, it's yeah, bent it's crimped in. over for clearance another racing feature no, that is original factory oh is it oh, okay see. wow the, the, the <laughs> what's that a locking cap a locking that's a funny cap. looking one isn't it, it? Looks like a cap. <laughs> <laughs> that's good but so the exhaust is a bit thicker, it's still registered, it still has the Lucas lights here. And here you can feel, I don't know if you can catch, capture that, no, the rough You're welding. asking a lot of your camera person here. The rough welding here, maybe we switch the light Yeah, off. that's, oh, I got it. You so it? yeah, you can see the, the, the early, early um, electro welding, let's call it. This is done by the apprenticeship people there. Early MIG, <laughs> early MIG. <laughs> yes. And rough finishing here in the corner. All original cars have rough finishing here in this corner. And you see these lines here, down here? You yeah. see the spot welds all along the trunk floor? Yeah. And that is, uh, so that makes me believe this is still the original body and everything. Yes, yeah, unmodified, unmodified. I don't okay. know what that, what that. Well, that is uh, maybe a good project car. You can drive it as it is. Huh? Again. Again here, the original triplex sign. Yeah, maybe we can see under the hood. Do you think anybody will let us see under the bonnet? I don't know. Who, who owns the car? Probably the guy sitting at the chairs. Yeah, I would be interested to know more because I've seen... I've seen the Weber carps here. Maybe you turn the light off. There's a Geschichte of Geschichte. There's not a lot because he's 50 years old. Yeah. Carlos had his car from 50 years old. He bought it in Tenerife and seitdem him it. Okay. So first delivery was uh, Portugal or Tenerife, Spain? Spain. Spain. First delivery was Spain. So it's the European spec, but it looks. Is it all original? So everything is original, he says. So was it, is this the second? Is it right? Is it so? So it's the second owner car. Oh, the other side, yeah. So it's the second owner car, and I will be surprised what story that is. It is owned. It's a long-term ownership over 50 years, and it's now for sale. You can imagine if you own a car for 50 years and you had it with 20 then obviously you are about 70 already. This is not original, but this is for him wichtig. Okay. I drive the car uh, uh, with by, sporty. by rallies. And, yeah. uh, so he's driving the car for rallies, and so that's why he used the Stromberg carbs. But we will go around. Those are Weber carbs. Weber carbs. And we go around and check the VIN and other features. So it is, it is an original E-type hat. Original tag. Original tag, and that is something in here. What is that, for cooling? Uh, so it looks like a catch can, maybe, for the air breather. Yeah, it's a common racing feature. See, it's going from the breather, yeah, oh, yeah. breather end to a catch can. Okay. It's a racing feature. Uh, okay, so, so that actually could be to start with a racing car, and that's why we see the modification for the rear brakes. Yeah, oh, look at look at in the hood. Look at the look at the big vent gap. Oh, look you see that. this? That's interesting to see. So that is that is for cooling the front brakes. Does it have? Look at the radiator. There's. Oh, so this manifold's interesting for the Webers. I don't, I don't recognize it. This one here. Yeah. These are Spanish, Spanish-made replica Webers. Are they? Oh, yeah. I don't recognize them. Oh, the hood's looking pretty good inside. The bonnet. It has, right on. It, it has the original radiator. It has, still has the original header tank. Yeah. You can tell that. So, so not of original feature, but modified for racing. It still has the original. Is that the original number here? 
I'm looking at engine Nine, number. Eight, five, five. Yeah, that's right. That's so it. So that's matching numbers. At least for the cylinder head. Yeah, nice car. 129,000 euros here at Techno Classica. So, ready to drive and maybe ready for some improvement. Well, that's a price. 130,000. Thank you. Nice car. Yep. And he. Here are two more E-types we see here. One I recognize from last year, which was offered for 299,000, and now it's 269,000, and that is an OBL, and the number is, is 347, so one of the last 50 OBL made. So we can check here what has been uh, restored. Looks like a fully restored car, not driven yet. It has some defects. And uh, that is maybe, I think I mentioned that last year already. You see the louvers are not the original ones, these are the Reaper ones. I'm uh, just pointing out a few things why that maybe dropped in price because people realized there's some original things are missing. The horn push is cracked, which is a shame, but it's still original. And a lot of Reaper features to make it look shiny. How about the com col sorry, the combo, white on red, that's nice, white right? White on red is nice, it's very common. We have seen that uh, on other cars. I think the one in Paris was the same. And I'm not saying it's a, it's a bad car, I like the wheels. Competition lace. And the Dunlop SP Sport. Wow, that's a beautiful wheel and tire combination. Wonderful, tubeless, running it tubeless. That is so nice. No wheel weights on there. Wow, that is so spectacular. Body lines are nice. Sometimes I see what they do with these wheels, they, they glue the weights on the inside only, and that is pretty smart. So they put the, the weights right into the center from the inside, just to hide them. That's a nice thing to show here, the, the latch they have on this car are actually original Wilmot Breeden, so you can still find them when you come closer here. Yeah, that's, that's an original. So that's a Wilmer Breeden one, and that's pretty strong to hold. It's nice looking. Yep. So that is probably an original spare part. Door cap. The, with the, the little groove. Here, so, so that's for the two-part door skin that's welded here, and this helps hide that. So repeating the number, is number, ah, it's number 247. Initially I said it's 347. Oh, we have the heritage certificate here, isn't that nice? Yep. So yeah, cream with red with a black hood. Wow, delivered to New York. What a beautiful car. 270,000 euros here today. And then we have another E-Type. Another one, Primrose Yellow. That was a the famous color when they were delivered. For some reason, I like to see the Primrose Yellow, but they're hard to sell. I've been told, I don't know why, but it's a Series 2 and we have seen only a few Series 2 cars over here. And you said it's a late Series 2 or? No, I don't know. So Selling for 90,000. Nice early one, it's a 69, over 69. And the chassis number is 125, so it's a pretty early Series 2, yeah. actually. You see series two sometimes you get this anodized aluminum finish on these on, on these on were already on the late S1. They oh really? The dull, yeah, oh the, the dull S1. finish, yeah. That, they didn't have the chrome but it was uh, So it'll be dull for the bezel, for yeah. the nut, and for the wiper. And the steering wheel. Yeah, this this is an aftermarket steering wheel, it's an aftermarket Yeah, it's very thick, yeah. And it makes a bit stronger feel in okay, the hand. the shifter kind of upgraded. It's a tape deck in there, whoa! Series two has ashtrays, perforated leather seats, of course, toggle switches. This could be an original one. Yeah, those usually survive pretty well. Yeah. They're installed somewhere. And the price was, you said? No, about 90,000 euros. So a Roadster for, for about 89,000 euro. That is a reasonable price. It looks brilliant. It has some patina, it's not brand new, but for driving, this is maybe a car to buy. Yeah, I like the Primrose Yellow. And what you have here, the seats are inclinable, the backrest. Yeah, they're adjustable, yeah. You can, and I wonder where this, um, the, the frame here. I don't know, we have, to, we have to cut it off though. We only have 10 seconds left oh, in the, okay. on this camera. Okay, so. see you on the next car then. 
So Sapin, Sapin Classic, and it's a French company here. But we just discovered an OBL gum metal, and we just have a closer look. They opened the bonnet for us. Um, well, we will go through it a little bit further. They have the original voltage regulator. The car has some anti-corrosion protection in the bonnet, what you see on some cars, but not on all. Well, let's see what number that is. Sadly, the VIN plate isn't the original one, and it's number 262. So that is OBL number 262. It has the original airflow rail. It has a lot of modern parts on it. Can we get the number on here? It looks like that's a Series 2 replacement or warranty cylinder head. It's not the original. So we can't compare because the, the VIN plate is re-stamped. So it, it says engine number 1382 and it could be because it's, we can't see that anymore. Yeah, you'd need to look at the engine block stamping maybe to verify that. Let me see if I got this a light on there. Oh, so the bonnet looks original. See the spot welds? That's really nice. It's the mesh, is the stone mesh is missing. Oh yeah, the rock guard's not there. And let's see the engine here. That's a right one, 1382. And there is supposed to be a number. I only can see the R1. Oh, is, oh you can actually see the number there? Not really. Just oh, look first. at that. It might be the original cylinder head. I'm wrong. Sorry, everybody. I so think this R could be original. Something, but the block is the original. I can see the number over I there. Think, wow. Okay. Here's a number. 875262. So that might be original. It has still the original long skirt and nylon nuts. Has been worked on, but maintained. I like the GD here. You see the spot welds? Yeah, I showed the other side, you yeah. You just mentioned that? Yeah. How about the louvers? The louvers look like Martin Roby reproduction ones. So you can't really tell, they should be a bit steeper. These are the flat ones, what I've seen Martin Roby is doing. Now, how about the interior? What do you think of the interior? The interior is redone, it's overhauled. But I love to see it. This is the original. Very rare to see the original. Dotted alloy dash. Let's have a look at this. This is Raypro, this is Raypro, but still, this is something really rare. It has some, you know, some scratches, but still, I prefer to see this than the Raypro. It's very easy to identify the Raypro. How about the legend? That that's is the original one because the W in the middle, you see the middle one, that's lower further down. So that is an original. And you see that with the, with the wiper here, that they. They corrected that, but that, that is an early original Dash Legend. So that is original here. Sadly, this isn't. So it's- The radio is original. I see kilometers per hour speedometer. So maybe it's a French registration, but look at this, the eight post pillar here. Oh, original. That's the original, that's the early star. It's like a pull of focus. Very rare. And it has that little screw in there. Oh which yeah. Which is correct. It has the recess on the door chrome. I think all the chrome looks good. The wide strip, the finisher, the pillar chrome, door cap with the little dip in it. All that chrome it, looks it, very it nice. It has a rare white chrome. That's here. what I was saying, yeah. You, you said that already. It has a butler lights. Mm -hmm. See, it has the original butler lights. So it still has a lot of original features. You know that. That, that is the original one, because yeah. the later ones have the, the E to be European conform. Pretty the nice curve. looking car here, it's stacking up. Look at the fit of the trunks, nice. It's very hard to get this fitted perfectly. You see how, how narrow the, the gaps are here? Yeah. Try to get that fitted correctly. That's very hard. 
We should inquire about price. What price is it? We have to ask. Should we ask? Yeah, we have to ask. Yeah, very nice E-Type. I'm really impressed with this one. So we have the information here on it. There it is in a store. Look at that. Oh, look, and there it is registered. Some pictures of the, the finished car. Tool roll, that's nice to see. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. So look at that opalescent silver gray with dark blue. Dark blue, and where has it been delivered to? For its owners? Portugal. So, Portugal. Wow. That's interesting. Wow, wow, wow. Some sort of document here. Can't really make it out. Oh, this is nice to see. Oh, yeah. That's the first, the title. Yeah, wow. Title of registration. Vehicle report. Oh, my God. More vehicle reports. So I think the last thing we need to do is ask price, but the gentleman's busy here. So, so we, we just with the dealer here, and uh, we just asked the price, and the price was three five three hundred fifty thousand euro. Okay. And can you tell something about the car? Is uh, the first registration was in, yes. was in Portugal? Portugal. It's the original registration. It's still it's still the original. So car you is used by Jaguar for all the presentation. Uh -huh. to use of Europe. Oh really? Yes. So this was the show car used by Jaguar for the Southern European countries? Yes, so, so. So, so yeah. So that was actually the, the Jaguar representation car for the Southern European countries. And the Jaguar presents a car to a story uh, in the Yes. In the, the 1961. So where was that presented? 1961 at the concourse. Oh, look at this, Richard. Richard, come on. <laughs> there we go. So this car was shown here at Estoril, because that's in August, built in August 61 and presented by Jaguar at a show. So that was the local. It was registered to the first on the October. On that day, so that was sold then, or was it registered on Jaguar? Yes, that's it. So, second owner. Oh, Se oh, the second E-Type. Second E-Type for right. the uh, sell in, the, uh, in Portugal. Ah, uh, so that was the second ever sold E-Type in Portugal. Wow, oh, lovely! Yeah, it's a rare car. And how many owners? How many owners? Three owners, okay. And is it restored? Sorry. It restored, restored, restoration? Is all, it... all is original. Oh, but the interior is new. And the interior and, and, uh, and the paint. And the paint. So six this. Year. So th six years ago, it has been restored six years ago. The interior, the seats is new and the outer paint. All the rest is uh, it's matching them. Up. We have to mention that it's available with SAP and Classic here. There's the contact yeah. information yeah. there. So it's a very original car. It's, it contains very many, many original features. Yes. And um, has not been an accident. So it is just a collector's car at which you can drive. That's what it is. Thank you very Perfect. much. So Thank you're you. located in where in France? Yeah, between Lyon and Clermont-Ferrand. Between Lyon and, and Clermont-Ferrand. Clermont We're live. Pull that down there, yep. Up there, up there, there. Oh, yep. So this is an early feature. Again, you see the, the double, the twin arms. The very early ones had, still has original screws in here. So they didn't mess with it. And the seal is affixed to the to the back side of the lid, right? Instead of, yeah. See the seal here? Mm-hmm. It's attached to the lid. Yeah, like the early car. See again with the drain rail and this finisher piece. One hole here. This is this is an early feature too, the hole, right? That that hole. Yeah. Yep. 
you have you have you have a jack. Look at that! Look at the the, the trunk. So that is car number 262. That looks all very nice. You see still the original spark plug cap that is something is really really rare what do you see here these ones but oh, these are reproductions so that might have gone on with the restoration but at least they, they took attention of it and it doesn't have a small mag it has a straight flange there so that's interesting this is number 62 and does not have a small neck and the other one the 69 had that or 68 Okay, come over here. Hi. Right. What is interesting to see? It has these the early original the covers on the on the on the brake fluid reservoirs. That one should be cut plated, but I see they also have the um, the early style uh, spark plug caps. These are the Ripper ones, but at least they paid attention to these details and they tried to make it really look original. The uh, the front suspension should be black. Here is a uh, cut plated or zinc plated. A few other things, but still they, maintain, they try to maintain it as original as possible. Still original screws on the bonnet. The welding, the spot welding of the, uh, the, the channels to the bonnet, the center bonnet is perfect. Mm. So this was Techno Classic. No, 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 we gotta start again. <laughs> So this was Techno Classica 24 and eventually we have discovered the most expensive E-Type. This one, 350,000, very original, great history. Um, that was it for this year. Yeah, amazing cars, four OBLs in total. Interesting features, interesting price comparison. If you need something, my address is underneath the video, contact me. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye. Yes, and here I'm giving another follow and subscribe the chance offering his car this one is an unmolested unrestored february 63 ots color combination as you can see is opalescent silver gray over black the good thing is it is still the original paint it is still the original interior you can see that on the pics which are coming later it is still the original soft top the original hood it still has the original toolkit with the lifting jack. That is all something I found really, really rare. Most of them have been replaced, thrown away. So that tells you the car has always been in good hands. The car is reliable and always driving, never let the owner down. It is just that he had other cars he is driving and this one is a bit neglected. So he's looking to find someone who has really some use of it and keeps it the way it is you will see some shades and the color tones and that is due to some blend ins or some buffing and well i'm here just to help you the asking price is 160,000 euro not sure if i said location is pennsylvania in the us contact me i will forward your your details to the owner you will get in touch and then you sort everything out i'm just here helping to find a new home for this beauty good luck to both of you and join me for my next video